إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد So we know in the chapter باب من هزل بشيء فيه ذكر الله أو القرآن أو الرسول The chapter regarding the one who makes a mockery of anything in which there is the remembrance of Allah or the Quran or the Messenger. This the Shaykh says, a Shaykh al Fawzan in explanation, هذا الباب باب عظيم. This is a great chapter. إذا تأمله الإنسان وعرف واقع الناس فإنه ينفعه الله به. If a person ponders over this chapter and he knows the reality of people, it will benefit him a lot. So the title of the chapter, باب من هزل الهزل هو اللعب والاستهزاء ضد الجد. The one who makes mockery or light-heartedness and joking around, i.e. the opposite of being serious about an affair. The opposite of being serious. That a person makes a mockery and a belittlement and light-heartedness and frivolous uh, activity and behavior regarding the Qur'an or the Sunnah or something with the remembrance of Allah in it. يَعْنِي مَنِ اسْتَهْزَأَ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنْ هَذِهِ الْأَشْيَاءِ فَمَا حُكْمُهُ So what is the ruling upon the one who makes a mockery of the Qur'an or the Sunnah or something from the remembrance of Allah? حُكْمُهُ The ruling upon him is أَنَّهُ يَرْتَدُّ عَنْ دِينِ الْإِسْلَامِ That the individual apostates from the religion of Islam لِأَنَّ هَذَا مِنْ نَوَاقِذِ الْإِسْلَامِ بِإِجْمَاعِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ Because this, making a mockery of the Qur'an or the Sunnah, it is by consensus of the Muslims a nullifier of Islam. سَوَاءً كَانَ جَادًّا Whether the person was actually being serious, أو هَازِلًا Or whether he was just making some frivolous mockery, O mazihan, whether he was just joking around. In any circumstance a person mocks the Qur'an, the Sunnah, the Prophet ﷺ, anything with the remembrance of Allah in it, حَيْثُ لَمْ يَسْتَثْنِ اللَّهِ إِلَّا الْمُكْرَهِ Then that person is upon apostasy, and the only exception to that rule is, the exception that is mentioned is, somebody who was completely, held and forced to have to do that. Meaning perhaps a non-believer threatened that individual and began to beat him and he was going to kill him. He said, either you say some words of mockery against your religion or I kill you. So now the person says it to save his life. Compelled, forced. In his heart he doesn't believe what he's saying, he doesn't accept it, but he just says it for the sake of now saving his life. Because the alternative is, he will be killed. So that is compulsion. Under compulsion like that, it is an exception. In the ayah of the Qur'an it mentions, مَنْ كَفَرَ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ بَعْدِ إِيمَانِهِ إِلَّا مَنْ أُكْرِحَ وَقَلْبُهُ مُطْمَئِنٌ بِالْإِيمَانِ إِلَّا مَنْ أُكْرِحَ Referring to the ones who disbelieve, except for those who are compelled. They are under compulsion and their hearts are still content upon Iman. Their hearts are upon Iman, but under that compulsion they have to say what they must say. وَقَدْ بَيَّنَ الشَّيْخِ أَنَّ هَذَا الْحُكْمِ فِي كِتَابِ اللَّهِ مَعَ سَبَبِ نُزُولِهِ فَقَالْ the reason why this ayah was revealed, the ayah that the shaykh, he mentions in this chapter, 
قل ابي الله واياته ورسوله كنتم تستهزئون say was it regarding allah and his ayat and his messenger that you were mocking you were making a mockery of allah his ayat his messenger is that what you are upon this particular ayah it was revealed and there is a hadith that explains where this ayah was revealed the revelation of this ayah regarding making mockery of the religion the story behind it is the sheikh quotes the hadith of ibn umar abdullah ibn umar رضي الله عنهما ومحمد ابن كعب محمد ابن كعب القرضي وزيد ابن أسلم زيد ابن أسلم who was the freed servant of عمر ابن الخطاب وقتادة قتادة ابن دعامة السدوسي دخل حديث بعضهم في بعض their various narrations were combined here Meaning all of those narrators, they narrated this hadith independently, but that was all put together, their words were all very similar into this one narration that is quoted here. أَنَّهُ قَالَ رَجُلٌ فِي غَزْوَةِ تَبُوكَ That a man said in the battle of Tabuk, مَا رَأَيْنَا And this man was one of the hypocrites. One of the hypocrites said, when that battle of Tabuk took place, مَا رَأَيْنَا مِثْلَ قُرَّاءَنَا أو قُرَّاءِنَا هَؤُلَاء We have not seen the likes of these reciters of ours. This statement of his, he intended by it mockery. Because he goes on to say, أَرْغَبَ بُطُونًا وَلَا أَكْذَبَ أَلْسِنًا وَلَا أَجْبَنَ عِنْدَ اللِّقَاءَ That will come to in a moment. So this incident now, this story that is being narrated, it occurred during the battle of Tabuk. And that was in the year 9 Hijri. In the year 9 Hijri. The battle of Tabuk. The reason for this particular battle, the battle of Tabuk, it is mentioned that أن الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم بلغه أن الروم يعدون العدة لغزوة المسلمين. That the Romans were preparing to come and attack the Muslims. And that was at the time of summer, when the heat is severe, and the fruits are ripening. So the time itself was a very difficult time in the heat of summer. And the distance to Tabuk was very far. And the opposition, the disbelievers at that time, they had a huge army. So there was, there was the heat of the summer, difficult time. There was a long journey to cover to get to Tabuk. The army of the disbelievers at the other end was a huge army. So you can see this was all a very difficult situation. فَلَيْسَ عِنْدَهُمْ اسْتِعْدَادٍ لِلتَّجَهُّزْ لِلْغَزُوْ And that's why they didn't really have the full preparations for their army, the Muslims. وَلِذَلِكَ سُمِّيَ هَذَا الْجَيْشِ بِجَيْشِ الْعُسْرَةِ وَسُمِّيَتْ هَذِي سَاعَةَ سَاعَةُ الْعُسْرَةِ so this was known as a time of difficulty. In this battle of Tabuk, it is mentioned that Uthman radiallahu anhu, he prepared from his own wealth 300 camels with all of the uh, saddles and everything that goes with it. 300 camels with all of the other equipment required alongside those camels. فَهُوَ الَّذِي جَهَّزَ جَيْشَ الْعُسْرَةِ مِنْ مَالِهِ الْخَاصِ He is the one who equipped 
the army of the Muslims at that time from his own private wealth, his own personal wealth. He used it all, uh, he used from it to prepare and to uh, equip the army of the Muslims at that time. وَكَذَلِكَ شَارَكَ مَنْ شَارَكَ مِنَ الصَّحَابَ بِمَا عِنْدَهُمْ مِنْ مَالِ And the other companions, whatever they could participate in terms of their wealth, then they gave that to equip the army of the Muslims and to prepare it. وَخَرَجُوا uh, And so they exited. They prepared the army, the Muslims, and they exited. وَكَانَتْ آخِرْ غَزْوَةْ غَزَاهَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ And this was the final battle that the Prophet ﷺ fought in, the battle of Tabuk. And when they left out, when the Muslims left out on that occasion, there were 30,000, 30,000 of them. They left out with the Prophet ﷺ. However, Abdullah ibn Ubay, and who was he? Abdullah ibn Ubay. Munafiq. What did he do in this battle? It is mentioned in the seerah. Munafiq. And others were munafiqeen. Half of the army, it is mentioned, turned their backs, ran away and came back. The munafiqeen. The munafiqeen, they turned their backs and they returned. It is mentioned Abdullah ibn Ubay came back, ran away with half of the army, the hypocrites of them. The hypocrites, they returned and they ran away. So anyway, the hypocrites in this battle now, as the Muslims were heading towards it, they began to talk. And they began to make excuses for not having to go, because it was a difficult battle this one. Very hot time of the summer, very far the distance to travel. It was all difficult. The army was huge at the other end, the opposition... So they began to make excuses why they couldn't go. Because of course they have no iman. They are hypocrites. They are not upon iman. So they didn't want to go. It was a difficult battle. And they couldn't be patient upon it. Only the people of iman would be patient upon such a great difficulty and trial to face. So this is from the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that these events occurred. And it was a test upon the people at the time to distinguish those hypocrites. To distinguish those hypocrites. So this was a test upon the people. This battle of Tabuk, it was decreed in a way as such, it was a test upon them all. أراد الله أن يختبر المسلمين ليظهر الصادق من المنافق To test them all to see which ones are the true Muslims and the believers. And which ones are the hypocrites? فَالصَّادِقُونَ مَا تَرَدَّدُوا وَلَا تَلَكَّأُوا The truthful ones, they did not hesitate, they were not reluctant at all. The believers, the ones upon iman in reality, they didn't hesitate. They were not reluctant. But as for the munafiqeen, they are the ones, when they realized how difficult this was going to be, the heat and the distance and the huge army of the disbelievers, they started to make their excuses and they started to make their reasons and their hesitations and their reluctances to go along with the Muslims. يَحْسَبُونَ أَنَّ غَزُوا بَنِي الْأَصْفَرْ مِثْلُ غَزُوا الْعَرَبْ كَأَنَّنَا بِهِمْ يُقَرَّنُونَ فِي الْأَصْفَادِ وَمَا أَشْبَهَ ذَلَكَ مِنَ الْكَلَامِ الْقَبِيحِ وَاعْتَذَرُوا عَنِ الْخُرُوجِ So they gave their excuses and they didn't want to go out with the Prophet ﷺ. But the Muslims, they were patient upon this difficulty. They were patient upon this difficulty. They were patient upon the hardship that overcame them. وَخَرَجُوا وَصَلُوا إِلَى تَبُوكَ وَنَزَلُوا فِي And they went out with the Prophet ﷺ and they arrived at Tabuk and they camped up there. فَلَمَّا عَلِمَ الْعَدُوا بِقُدُومِهِمْ إِلَى تَبُوكَ صَابَهُ الرُّعْبُ وَتَقَهْقَرُ When the enemies found out that the Muslims have come, they brought their army and they've come. Fear fell into their hearts. Fear fell into their hearts that they've come. فَنَزَلَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهِ وسلم أَيَّامًا فِي تَبُوكَ يَنْتَذِرُ قُدُومَهُ وَمَجِيئَهُمْ So the Prophet ﷺ was camped up now at Tabuk, waiting for the enemy to come. But they were overcome by cowardice. 
When they realize the Muslims have come, they're not afraid. All that journey in the heat and everything, they've come, such is their iman. Then cowardice overcame the disbelievers, and it fell into their hearts, and they did not come. The disbelievers did not come. وَلَكِنَّهُمْ جَبْنُوا أو جبنوا وألقى الله الرعب في قلوبهم ورجع المسلمين سالمين مأجورين وخاب المنافقون. So the Muslims they returned sound and safe and with their reward and the disbelievers they were the ones who were in loss from this action of not going and showing their excuses etc. The Muslims all returned back safe and sound. وأنزل الله في هذه الغزوة سورة كاملة سورة توبة سورة التوبة all of that is revealed regarding the battle of Tabuk. التي فضح الله فيها المنافقين وأثنى فيها على المؤمنين. In that surah, surah al-Tawbah, you will see how Allah praises the believers, praises the believers in that surah, and criticizes the disbelievers, the munafiqeen. And this is the wisdom of Allah in this way, that He tests the people. To see who are the truthful ones and who are those who are not upon iman in reality. So the point being, in this particular battle now, in what occurred as they were going, some incident occurred where some of the munafiqeen started to say some things. فكان للمنافقين كلمات منها ما في هذا الحديث حيث قال رجل منهم ما رأينا أو ما أرينا مثل some of the munafiqeen they began to say that we have not seen the likes of these people talking about the companions of the Prophet ﷺ. We have not seen the likes of these people before. We have not seen the likes of them. Desiring for their stomachs. Desiring for their stomachs. أَرْغَبُ بُطُونًا What does it say? Gluttonous. 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 Ewa. The word gluttonous. The one who strives after food. Gluttony. They said we have not seen anybody more gluttonous than the companions. The ones who are desiring for their stomachs. And similarly, وَلَا أَكْذَبَ أَلْسُنًا Neither have we seen more lying upon their tongues, that they are dishonest upon their tongues, they are lying upon their tongues when they speak. وَلَا أَجْبَنَا عِنْدَ اللِّقَاءِ And neither more cowardly when they meet the enemy. So they started to make this type of speech, these types of descriptions, talking about the companions of the Prophet wasallam. That's who they were talking about, that's who they were describing. فَقَالَ عوف ابن مالك عوف ابن مالك When he heard them saying these things, he said, كَذَبْتَ You have lied. He said to this individual who was making these comments, you have lied. وَلَكِنَّكَ مُنَافِقْ But rather you are a hypocrite. These statements of yours that we have not seen anybody more gluttonous, anybody more lying, and anybody more... Uh, cowardly than the companions, you have lied, you are a hypocrite. La ukhbiranna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Awf ibn Malik said, I am going to definitely go and tell the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. I am definitely going to go and tell the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And this is from rebuking the evil. مَنْ رَأَ مِنْكُمْ مُنْكَرًا فَلْيُغَيِّرْهُ بِيَدِهِ فَإِنْ لَمْ يَسْتَضِيفَ بِلِسَانِهِ فَإِنْ لَمْ يَسْتَضِيفَ بِقَلْبِهِ To change the evil. And this was an evil now. So he was going to rectify this evil. He said, I am going to go and tell the Messenger of Allah وسلم, about these statements of yours regarding the companions. And this is from advice. If a Muslim became aware of others engaging in evil activity, for example, living in a Muslim land, then it is good and it is advice that you go and you tell the Muslim rulers, the leaders, the people in authority that this is, this is what the Muslims are up to and this is what they are saying from evil. If you see evil activities in your society, 
living in a Muslim country with a Muslim ruler, then yes, it is good that you inform and get the message through to the rulers and people in authority that the Muslims are behaving in this evil way, doing these evil things, these evil activities, fraud, etc., crime, to inform the people in authority. That is from the good advice. So this is similar here now that Auf ibn Malik heard this evil occurring, this evil speech regarding the companions, and he said, I will go and inform the one in authority, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. فَذَهَبَ عَوْفٌ إِلَىٰ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم لِيُخْبِرَهُ So Awf ibn Malik went to the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم to inform him. فَوَجَدَ الْقُرْآنَ قَدْ سَبَقَهُ But when he got to the Messenger of Allah, imagine they were all in this army now. So in this part of the army, he heard them saying this. He said, I'm going to go to where the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم is and tell him. He went to him. By the time he got to him, he realized the Qur'an, the revelation had already come. The revelation had already come to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. لِأَنَّ اللَّهَ سُبْحَانَهُ تَعَالَى سَمِعَ مَقَالَتَهُ وَأَنزَلَ عَلَى رَسُولِهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَى الْخَبَرِ قَبْلَ أَنْ يَسِلَ إِلَيْهِ الْعَوْفِ Now, Awf. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala obviously was aware. Was aware. Regarding what they were saying. And the revelation came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam before Awf even got to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to inform him. وَفِيهِ عَلَامَ مِنْ عَلَامَاتِ النُّبُوَّةِ وَأَنَّ الرَّسُولَ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ كَانَ يُوحَى إِلَيْهِ وَيُبْلُغُهُ الْخَبْرَ بِسُرْعَةِ This is from the miracles of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. To that level of speed, before Awf even manages to get there, the revelation has already come informing him of this affair. ثُمَّ جَاءَ ذَلِكَ الرَّجُلْ تَكَلَّمَ أَلَّذِي تَكَلَّمَ بِهَذَا الْكَلَامُ عَلِيَاذُ بِاللَّهِ Then that man, the hypocrite, who had been saying these things, he came. The hypocrite now who had been caught. The one saying these things, he came. وَوَجَدَ النَّبِيَّ صلى الله عليه وسلم. And he came and he caught up with the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم where he was in this caravan, in this army moving along. He caught up with the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. وَقَدْ ارْتَحَلَ وَرَكِبَ نَاقَتَهُ And the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم had already, uh, he was already riding upon his camel and he was moving along. Already riding upon his camel, moving along. فقال, so this man said, Ya Rasulullah, Innama kunna nakhudu wa natahaddathu hadith al-rakb naqta'u bihi ana al-tariq. The man came, said to the Prophet ﷺ, Messenger of Allah, we were just, as you say in English, the appropriate phrase similar to this to understand, killing time. That's exactly what it means. That we were just killing time, as you say in your language now. We were just talking, joking around, messing about. We didn't really mean these things we were talking about. We didn't really mean this about the companions. We were just hadith al-rakb. Hadith al-rakb, as you're traveling along on a long journey, and you're just talking, conversing, as you say, killing time. Just conversation. They said, that's all we were doing. We didn't mean anything. We were just killing time. Just going along with the time. How do they explain it? We were only discussing... Conversing and playing. Conversing and playing, nothing else? Passing Passing time. Passing time. We were just passing the time. Passing the time. That's a little bit more eloquent than killing time. We were just passing the time. Passing the time, just talking, joking, just different conversation. We didn't mean anything. So he said, إِنَّمَا كُنَّا نَخُوضُ وَنَتَحَدَّثْ حَدِيثَ الرَّكْبِ Just passing time. نَقْطَعُ بِهِ عَنَاءَ الطَّرِيقِ Just to go along in the journey, pass the time by as we are journeying along. قَالَ بْنُ عُمَرْ Abdullah ibn Umar, رضي الله عنهما said, كَأَنِّي أَنظُرُ إِلَيْهِ مُتَعَلِّقًا بِنِسْعَةِ نَاقَةِ نَبْزَ سَلَّمْ He said, it's as if I can see him. The Prophet ﷺ was upon his camel. This munafiq now catching up. Oh Messenger of Allah, we were just joking, we were just passing the time. As if he's trying to keep up with the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet ﷺ is on the camel moving along. It's as if he's alongside now trying to hold on. Oh Messenger of Allah, we were only joking, we were only this, we were only that. Ibn Umar says, it's as if I can see him, he was doing that alongside the camel of the Prophet ﷺ. Meaning the, the rope and the reins. 
that he was trying to hold on to the rope and the reins of Messenger of Allah. We were only doing this, we were only doing that. Then, وَإِنَّ الْحِجَارَ تَنْكُبُ رِجْلِهِ And the stones, the pebbles were kicking up on his feet. وَهُوَ يَقُولُ إِنَّمَا كُنَّا نَخُوضُ وَنَلْعَبُ And he's saying, oh Messenger of Allah, we were just playing around, we were just passing the time. We didn't mean anything. فَيَقُولُ لَهُ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ And the Messenger of Allah was saying to him, saying to him, أَبِ اللَّهِ وَآيَاتِهِ وَرَسُولِهِ كُنْتُمْ تَسْتَهْزِئُونَ Were you making a mockery with Allah and His ayat and His Messenger? مَا يَلْتَفِتُ إِلَيْهِ وَمَا يَزِيدُهُ عَلَيْهِ The Prophet ﷺ wasn't looking at him, just saying, saying this, أَبِ اللَّهِ وَآيَاتِهِ وَرَسُولِهِ كُنْتُمْ تَسْتَهْزِئُونَ Not even looking at him. Just saying this and repeating this to him every time he kept saying, but we were just passing time, we were just passing time, we didn't mean anything. The Prophet ﷺ repeating to him, with Allah and his ayat and his messenger, you were mocking? أَبِ اللَّهِ وَآيَاتِهِ وَرَسُولِهِ كُنْتُمْ تَسْتَهْزِئُونَ مَا يَلْتَفِتُ إِلَيْهِ وَمَا يَزِيدُهُ عَلَيْهِ This narration now then, what do we benefit from it? What do we benefit from this narration? Firstly, أَنَّ مَنْ اسْتَهْزَأَ The one who makes a mockery with regards to Allah, with regards to His Messenger, with regards to the Qur'an, apostates from the religion of Islam. Because that completely nullifies your tawheed. وَهَذَا وَجْهُ الْمُنَاسَبَ مِنْ عَقْدِ الْمُصَنِّفِ لِهَذَا الْبَابِ أَنَّ مَنْ اسْتَهْزَأَ بِاللَّهِ وَبِرَسُولِهِ وَبِالْقُرْآنِ أو برسوله أو بالقرآن أو استهان بشيء من ذلك أنه يرتد عن دين الإسلام ردة تناف التوحيد وتخرج من دين الإسلام. So that is the first point. Anybody who mocks Allah, the ayat, the messenger, then that mockery, whether you're joking around like this man was trying to claim he was irrelevant. That is apostasy. Secondly, أن نواقض الإسلام لا يحفظ فيها عن اللعب والمسح. The things which nullify your Islam, you can't justify doing one of them by saying I was just joking or messing around. Something which nullifies your Islam, like mocking the religion. If you do that, you can't justify yourself by saying it was just a joke, I didn't mean it. Because here that's exactly what they tried to claim, but it wasn't accepted. That isn't a justification. If you mock the religion, that is mockery, whether you're joking or serious. So that cannot be used as an excuse. Thirdly, we also benefit from this narration the obligation of rejecting the evil. The obligation of rejecting evil. Here, Auf ibn Malik, when he saw that evil, he went and rejected it straight away and said, I'm going to go and inform the Prophet ﷺ to deal with this. Fourthly, the one who does not reject kufr and shirk, then he himself is a kafir. أَنَّ مَنْ لَمْ يُنْكِرْ الْكُفْرُ وَالشِّرْكْ فَإِنَّهُ يَكُونُ كَافِرًا لِأَنَّ الَّذِي تَكَلَّمَ فِي هَذَا الْمَجْلِسِ وَاحِدٍ وَاللَّهُ نَسَبَ هَذَا إِلَى الْمَجْمُوعِ فَقَالْ أَبِ اللَّهِ وَآيَاتِهِ وَرَسُولِهِ كُنْتُمْ تَسْتَهْزِئُونَ لَا تَعْتَذِرُوا قَدْ كَفَرْتُمْ بَعْدَ إِيمَانِكُمْ Meaning that if one person is making the mockery, everybody else is sitting back listening and accepting and agreeing and acknowledging that, then the ruling applies to them all. Here the ayah said, were you all making a mockery, you all don't make your excuses now, you have disbelieved after your iman. Even though it was only one of them talking, the others were there, the other munafiqeen listening, agreeing with that, acknowledging it, carrying on with it, then the ayat came about all of them. So you cannot sit back and listen to this type of speech and say it's nothing to do with me. You must reject that evil, turn away from it and leave that and go away from it. Also we learn, that it is permissible and good to go and inform the people in authority when you see evil occurring in the society. That is something good. And it is not considered backbiting or namima or storytelling. That is something good that you go and inform the ruler that this evil is occurring. There are certain people committing fraud and they are committing crime and evil and have become aware of it and this is the proof. That's good. So that this can be dealt with and the evil can be removed. That you can't say, but you're just storytelling. Why are you going, and uh, if we're going to use street language again, why are you going grassing up these people? People will say that. Why are you going and grassing up on them? Why are you telling over them and spreading stories about them? But here, when something evil is going on, you have to reject that evil. If you know there are people committing fraud, for example, 
big fraud network is going on. Then of course you go and tell the people in authority that there's fraud going on, there's evil going on, there's deception going on. You inform the people of authority. Nowadays, something relevant, these takfiris and these kharijis and these extremists, the scholars have given the fatwa even in this country, even the disbelieving rulers and the authorities, you go and inform them. If you become aware of somebody upon extremism, upon ideas of terrorism, these types of affairs, you go and inform the authorities about them. Even if they are disbelieving authorities, they are non-Muslim authorities, you go and inform them. That is from the goodness of enjoying the good and forbidding the evil. You're going to stop this person from destroying himself and from destroying others. So that is permissible and completely correct. And that is not just permissible and correct. That is what you are supposed to do, what you have to do. If you become aware of that type of evil, you go and inform the authorities. So that is what Awf ibn Malik did here. He went and informed the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Also what we benefit from this, احترام أهل العلم وعدم سخرية منهم أو الاستهزاء بهم لأن هذا المنافق قال ما رأينا مثل قرائنا هؤلاء It also indicates to us that you do not mock the people of knowledge the scholars here they were mocking the people of knowledge the sahaba these comments they were making they were making them about the sahaba we have not seen anybody more gluttonous and more uh, deceitful upon their tongues lying and more cowardly than these people the companions they were talking about Hadith indicates it is not permissible to speak in that way of the people of knowledge and the people of understanding and respect. Also what we learned here was a miracle from the miracles of the Prophet ﷺ. That even before Awf ibn Malik went to tell him, the revelation had come and told him already what was going on and what these people had done. That shows to you the miracle of the Prophet ﷺ and the truthfulness therefore of the Prophet ﷺ in the messengership. Also what we benefit from this, that the nullifiers of Islam cannot be excused through joking. If a person says he's joking, the exception to that only is if a person was under compulsion. Under compulsion is different. But joking and messing around, that is not an excuse at all. Also, one of the benefits we learn from this is to be severe upon those who are enemies of Islam in this way. Severity upon them. The Prophet ﷺ behaved with him now, dealt with him in a harsh manner, repeating to him that ayah, not looking at him. And he's running along saying, no, no, no. Showing him some severity in his affair. So that is something good. And of course, no doubt, there is softness in its place and there is harshness in its place. A person is not always harsh with people and a person is not always soft with people. Every situation, every type of person has the relevant needs. That sometimes you require to be soft with an individual, sometimes you require to be harsh with an individual. Harshness sometimes may give you more benefit with a person than being soft with him. Give him some solid, hard advice, that may fall into his head better than being soft with him all the time. Sometimes that may be better advice for him. To be severe with someone, put him in his place, and then he thinks a bit more. So it depends on the circumstance. It's wrong when people keep saying to you, all the time with everybody be soft. Not all the time. Some people, they may need some harshness. They need to be given some push to get them onto the straight and narrow path. So it depends on the circumstance and how you uh, deal with the people in different situations. So there are the benefits we learn from that narration regarding that. The clear, obvious point to take note is mockery of the religion. Joking about the religion, any type of evil speech like that, that is considered apostasy. So that is a severe, severe warning regarding a person and how he needs to respect and honor the religion and not to fall into any type of belittlement regarding it. That's what we'll conclude today. Slightly shorter lesson, we'll be delayed uh, due to some traffic issues. Inshallah, next week we'll begin on time, 7.15 p.m. 7.15 p.m. on time, inshallah, next week. And we'll carry on with the next chapter. Uh, the next chapter from Kitab al-Tawheed. Uh, talking about the different aspects of Tawheed. How to perfect your Tawheed. And warning against all of these types of things that can negate your Tawheed. Or can nullify your Tawheed. So inshallah ta'ala next week. Inshallah on time 7.15 will begin with the next chapter. We'll conclude there for today. Wa sallallahu ala nabiyya Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.
there's any questions we're able to take, we can do it. Otherwise, we'll leave it there. What if, the, what if the person basically making this basically jahil, he doesn't know any rulings or anything like that? But the scholars, they mention it in the books of fiqh, when you go into the detail of these types of issues. A person is completely ignorant, but even then, no matter how ignorant a person is, doesn't understand anything. He at least understands, every person understands what respect is and disrespect is. Somebody could be IQ zero, zero IQ. He can't work out what five plus five is. But even he knows how to behave well with his parents, and how not to behave. Even he knows that much. He knows he can't swear at his parents. Even he understands that much. Every person understands what respect is and what respect isn't. So with these types of things, it's a bit difficult to start making excuses of ignorance. How can you be ignorant when you're mocking the religion? Somebody doesn't know that's wrong? Anybody with the littlest, smallest amount of understanding knows you don't mock Allah, mock the religion, mock the Prophet so that type of thing is severe. Somebody who is upon that, he needs to be taught instantly, clearly, and given that education greater, to a greater degree. This is something clearly haram for you to do, and every person has that basic understanding at least, of what respect is. Even if you don't have any other intelligence, you know at least what respect is, with your parents and with other people. Everybody has that natural understanding. Do you know someone who has uh, extremist ideas, and you don't report him to the authorities, that's what the Sheikh said here. That's what was mentioned. If you become aware that somebody is upon extremism and he is seriously involved and he's planning things, etc., and you don't go and tell the authorities, then you are culpable for it. You have played a share in allowing this man to carry out his evil. You must go and inform the authorities. Must. You become aware somebody is certainly upon this pathway of evil and of extremism and misguided. Then you must do something about it. You must act. You can't just allow him to carry on and make a bomb and do something. So you must act upon that if you become aware of something severe going on. So we'll leave it there. Carry on next week then inshallah.